Hi guys. Um, the next couple videos are going to be dealing about methods. I've introduced them to you and have you guys um, been using them for a number of your projects to help break up your code, really in essence to um, code your stuff in a more dry method. Dry is an acronym. Um, it's D-R-Y and it stands for don't repeat yourself. Um, if you are coding poorly, you tend to write in a uh, wet code, um, which stands for waste everyone's time, write everything twice. Okay, so um, methods we've been using to help break up the logic so that um, each thing is kind of inclusive. We're only doing one thing at a time. Um, so, you know, before at the start of the course, if we wanted to print something, we would, you know, print um, typing up our command and say we do hello world. Okay. Um, and then we would run that and that would run fine. But if you were trying to break up your code and you wanted it to do something specific, um, we needed a little bit more. Okay. So that prints, but then we have learned that we write public static void, let's say print hello. Okay. And we learned that we could create a method. And as long as it was outside of another method that was created, we could write public static void, give it a name. And then inside of this code block is the code that I would want to run. So I could run, um, so this is, let's say no method, and then we can copy this. From a method, okay. So um, you guys end up doing a project where you could call a method. So you created the method, and if I ran my code, it wouldn't do anything except for print this. Um, but if we wanted to print both of them, so I'm just going to show how it runs. It's just going to print hello world. And the reason is, is because if I hover over, it says method print hello is never used. Um, that's because we have to actually call it. So inside of our main method, we would have to call it. Or inside of another method, we would have to call it. So if I type print hello, now that is going to change colors. And if I run this again, um, it will give us both of those print statements. Okay, so the first one, if we're running down on our code, we get to this line, we're going to execute it. Then we go to our next line. Our next line, line nine, is a call to a method. So it's going to look for a method that has the exact same name. And then it's going to execute everything in the code block. So it's going to execute line 13. Come to 14, since that's the end of my method, it's going to jump back up here, then go to the next line, line 10, and that's why it's saying finished with code. Okay? Um, I could even put a print method dot print line. This is the end of my code. Okay. Now I want to start introducing, and I will explain it a little bit more, but I'm going to show you kind of how it works. Um, what we have always done is that a method is always going to have a set of parentheses. And we've just defaulted to where there's nothing being passed in. But we're getting to a situation where we're doing stuff repetitive, repetitively, and it's annoying. Um, like uh, the modulus clock. Every time you use the modulus clock um, or other projects, you were using the scanner multiple times and you had to recreate it in every single method. Part of it is I wanted you to practice creating them, but it's tedious. So um, we can actually pass in information here, okay, inside of this. We can say what we want to put into it or what that method requires. And then in when we call the method, we can give it that information that it needs. 
Okay, so I do want to go to, um, and this will be in the Trello board, but just to kind of explain and reference a little bit easier, and then you'll watch me implement. Okay, so we have been creating a method before. We've been putting public static void. We give a method name, um, nothing in the parentheses because that is optional. Um, and then executing the code block for that method. That's what we have been doing up to now. Okay, now if I actually look at the syntax public static without going into too much detail, that is a modifier for who can access or which program uh, or parts of my code can access that specific method. Um, the return type, which we have always put as void um, up to now, is just saying if that method is returning back something to where it was called or if it's returning nothing. Then we had our name of our method, whatever it was, should be descriptively named, and then we have a parameter list. Okay, Inside the parameter list, we can list the type um, and the order of what that method requires for it to run. And up to now, you guys have been running methods that required no parameters. We are going to start building them with parameters to make our lives easier. Okay, and then inside this code block, so starting at the squiggle bracket, finishing at the, at the closing squiggle bracket, is all of the code that will be executed inside of that method. So if we look, um, here is an example. Um, See, our modifier is public static. The return type is int. The method name is min function, and it has two parameters in there, and they are both int type variables, okay? Once we get inside the code block, let's look at what it's doing. So from here to here, we need to understand that's the method that's running. Um, I am declaring a variable called min, and then I'm asking if this value right here that's being called is greater than this value, whatever was put in. If it is, then the min will be initialized as that n2. Otherwise, the min will be initialized as the n1. And then to return an int, I am returning that back to where it was called. Okay. Um, so to see some of that in action, um, we will be getting into that, but I, I just want to kind of focus on this. So um, we are going to start doing code that's a little bit more like this. I'll walk through a bunch of examples so you guys can see. Um, now, we've never used the return uh, syntax because we have always in public static void, which does not require anything to be returned. If we are using something where we're returning something back, then we do have to use the return, okay? Um, and we can return anything that we want. So we can return ints, doubles, floats, booleans, strings, um, and if you go into computer programming too, we can be returning uh, very customized data types um, for specific classes that we could create. Um, so an example of when I'm running a method and returning something. So here, if I'm running a method that is returning, say, the an int, um, uh, and that method is basically taking the sum of the first parameter and the second parameter, if it's returning it, then this simplifies to one number, which simplifies to 15, which then I can use to assign to, say, another variable, or I could print it out, okay? So here we kind of see an example of a method being called, okay, and then used. So in this main method, we have um, three variables. We have uh, A as 11, B as 6, and C that is being defined by a method, okay? And this method is passing in A and B because that's what I'm putting in here, 
okay? So the call for the method, it requires two things and I'm giving it to them. I can give it as a variable itself or as a specific int value. However, I have to meet the requirements of when the method was created. So this min function requires two int variables. That's why they have ints here, okay? Um, it does not have to have the same variable name as what I have here. This is just the variables that I've already created and I can pass them in. The actual passing in part is right here. I'm giving it those requirements. I'm saying whatever is the value for A, which is 11, is going to be used at that first position and it will now be called N1 for the entirety of this code block. Um, the second value B, which uh, is my variable, already holds a value of six. That will be in the second position of my parameters, okay? Um, and will be from now on inside this code block will be referred to as N2. So if I'm looking at how this runs, N1, remember, is 11. N2 is 6. So is uh, 11 greater than 6? Yes, it is. Then the min variable will be initialized with the value of 6. Otherwise, the min value will be initialized with the value of 11. And then I am returning the min value. So in this case, the min value of these two would return n2. n2 would be assigned to min, so this would return 6. Is this completely error-proof? No. Looking at this, if both of those numbers were the same, it would be problematic. Uh, we would have to add an additional case in there. Um, so let's go ahead and let's create this so we can see it actually working. Okay. So in here, we have our print, print hello. Let's go ahead and create another one. Um, so we could go ahead, and I'm going to create it a couple different ways. Public, static, let's say void in this case. Um, and I'm going to call it print min. And in this case, I want to find the minimum between two values. Um, so in this case, I want to use int. So let's do... Um, my first requirement for running this method will be an int. I'm going to say, uh, call it first number. It really doesn't matter what I call it, um, but it does help you when you're trying to create the method because it will put the words as you're typing them and let you kind of have an idea of what you should put in there. Okay, so my second one will be second number. Then I create my code block. Now, if I put return, I am going to start getting an error. See, it says return is unnecessary as a last statement in avoid method, okay? Because I do not need to return anything, I should not type return, okay? So I could first take those numbers and I can start putting some conditionals in it. In this case, the first number could be greater than the second number, less than the second number, or exactly the same as the second number okay so let's go ahead and create that and we can do if first number is greater than the second number I want to do something else if first number is less than the second number, I want to do something else, okay? If the first number is not greater than the second number and not less than the second number, then it would have to mean that they are the same. So I want to do something else. And in this case, um, I am going to want to find out what the min of that number is because that's what I'm doing. So um, in this case, let's just system.out.println the minimum number is a 
second number. Okay, that's for the first one. For the second one, it would not be the second number, it would be the first number. And they are the same. Okay. Mm -mm. Okay, so I've created a method. I have two requirements to run my method, two ints. And inside there, I have some conditionals for doing my code, making decisions. Um, but it still will not run because if I hover over it, it says that it is never used because I have not called it. So if I want to call it, let's go ahead and comment out these two. I don't need to run them right now. Um, let's do the print min. So I do print min. If I do this, because this method requires two int variables, if I hover over this, it says print min int int, okay? I cannot apply not doing anything, not giving it any requirements. I have to give it something. I cannot say one and 3.55 in there because what does it see? It sees as the first requirement right here, it sees a string. And the second requirement, it sees a double. It requires two ints. I have to give it two ints. That's one of the reasons why the Java is set up this way to make sure that you are doing it correctly. Okay, so let's say 5 and 35. Okay, now if I go ahead and run that, it will call this down. I'm passing in this information. 5 is going to be given a temporary variable name called first number. 35 is given a temporary variable name of second number, and then it's running through the code. So the minimum number is 5. Okay. Now that is using void, okay? Now let's create one where it's returning a value. So I say public static, and I actually wanna return that min number where, it, well, it's going to be an int. So I could say int uh, return min. I'm gonna give it the same thing, a first number, and an int second number, Okay, now I can go through and basically I am going to use almost the same code again. Okay, but I don't need to actually print here because what I want this method to do does not mean that I have to print everything. Maybe I want this method to actually do some calculations and return to me a specific number that I need to use in some other calculations. Okay, um, so Say uh, if you were trying to find out your grade, you want to first add up all of your grades, and then after that, you are going to divide by the number of grades you added up. So that's how you would get the average. It's multiple steps. We can create more methods um, that are specific to just what we need. So in this case, like what they did in the example, I'm going to, uh, and declare a variable, another int variable called min, and I'm saying if first number is greater than second number, um, now I'm gonna write this one way and then show you how to write it the other way. I can say return, uh, actually, let's just take this off. I'm gonna write it two different ways. Return second number, okay? If first number is less than second number, then I can say return first number else they're both the same we already know they're both the same so I could return either one so um, let's say return second number it doesn't matter because they're both the same we understand how our code works okay I still need to call this um, so let's go ahead and call this uh, return min and I give it the same thing 5 and 35 okay now I'm gonna go ahead and run this because when you are returning a value, 
it's not going to just print. A lot of uh, students are gonna say, oh, well, my code's not working. It is it is working. You need to realize that you are returning a value. So if you don't do anything with that returned value, just like what we've seen on tutorials point, if you don't do anything with that returned value, it's not going to do anything for you. Um, it's not gonna automatically print because a computer is dumb. It's only gonna do what you tell it to. Okay, so if I wanted to print this, um, I could do it one of two ways. I could say system.out.println, and I could actually call the method in here. So let's paste this like this. That would return. Nope, that was right. Okay, let's rerun it. So this will return, it's not going to print any sentence, it's just going to print that minimum number um, when it, once it finishes. This is okay uh, if you only need to do the calculation once. Um, so that's still running. A better way to do this though um, is if you are doing some type of calculation and you're calculating that minimum number and you need to pull that up multiple times, um, you don't want to have to paste that and have the computer. So if I was, let's, let's write two print lines just so you can see what I'm talking about. The minimum number again is and I call this right here, like what we did. The minimum number is, okay. So if I do this here, every time I call, this right here. So I get in this line to print this line out. It starts printing and it realizes, oh, it's got to call this method with those values and then pulls them down. Okay. So this five and 35, it's going to my, my return min. It's doing this calculation um, and then returning a value. Okay. When I get to this line, it's doing it again. It's, it's literally recalculating again. You're making the computer have to do more work. Okay. Would it really slow down our stuff uh, in this case? No. If you have some heavy intensive algorithms, um, you're trying to do a lot of stuff, it will um, start to bog down your system. It's, it's extra calls. It's making your computer have to read more lines of code. Okay, so this is not really preferential for you to do it every time that you need to use it. Okay, what would be better is since you know that that method is going to return something to return it to um, a variable that will hold that information and then we can just call that variable so minimum number and minimum number okay this also helps to cut down on issues let's say um, so when this runs, um, it is doing the calculation only once. It's getting stored and then I'm just calling it back, okay? If I was using this same thing, if I accidentally put in the wrong value, okay? Um, this is not the same value as this, okay? So that's why it is preferential if we're going to end up using um, a method more than once, we want to actually store the values so we don't have to recalculate and we can ensure that we are not making any mistakes, okay? I can also say uh, value one is five, int value two is 35, and actually put them in like this, value one, because value one has been declared as an int and it holds the value five, that still works. Value two, okay? And I could do the same thing here. So copying all of these. So we do that calculation. 
again, this would be better minimum number and this would be better minimum number. Okay, so running this, it would do those calculations. Uh, it's only calculating return min once, which is what we want. Our code runs faster, it's cleaner. Okay, now going back here where I said that there is a couple ways that I could do this. If I look at uh, dry um, coding, so not repeating yourself, I'm using multiple returns and I could probably actually write this better where I'm not returning multiple times if I don't need to. Sometimes your code will end up having it, but other times it doesn't. So instead of this, if I declared a minimum value here and then I just set it, so instead of returning, I say, well, min should be this. Min should be this. min is this um, then at the very end notice if I look I have a little bit of error saying because I'm missing a return statement my return statement um, has to at the very least be the very last bit of code that I have okay so I can say return min um, and this is actually a lot cleaner code it's a lot easier to read okay and my code will run exactly the same um, so that's it for this video. I will go through some more examples in the next videos. Um, this is an orientation on how we can use methods differently um, and call them giving them parameters. And all that means is that the method, when we create it, we say that it has some requirements. We give the requirements when we call the method and that's it so we can choose to do it as um, void where it won't return anything and everything is done inside of the method or where it will return a value okay like what we see here and we use the return syntax so that's it for this video um, go to the next video we will cover some more um, uh, method creation uh, to help you guys out for your month day calculator all right good luck have fun